Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right we have a sailor and this is a king of pen and this is the Sakura Nagar. We have a classic pens LB5 in the Kauseki. We have an Omas Arte Italiana Paragon Grande in the Arco Brown. We have a Tatcha Miabi's Winter's Breath. We have a Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove. We have a Molteni, and this is the Modelo 55S. We have a Scribo 3 in the Bologna Blue. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the Sand. We have a Visconti, and this is the Luxor Obelisk. And we have a Visconti, and this is the Ecstasy de Oud. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the beautiful Sailor King of Pen Sakura Nagar. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, pen. Uh, it's a Macchie, it's a Varden, uh, and these are Sakura petals flowing down a river. Um, so this is a uh, Sailor 1911 that you can see there, 1911 Sailor, Japan, uh, founded, yeah, 1911. So this is a King of Pen. It's in the cigar shape. This is a beautiful pen with these abalone shell Varden around that cap and also around the body. Really glad that I picked this up when I did. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that it is in my collection. Uh, this is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's a special edition pen. It's not a limited edition. Uh, you can still order it from Sailor, but it's a special order. Uh, it has a Sailor King of Pen nib. And uh, this uh, one on here is a broad nib. It's a cartridge converter. Uh, I can post the cap if I want to. But I don't really want to um, sort of mar or scratch or chip this finish. Um, th these Raden sort of uh, shells here are very pronounced. So you can feel them. And you can line up the pattern as well there between the cap and the body. Uh, so there's, uh, th I think, three uh, threads on that uh, cap. So... Uh, you sometimes will find that one will misalign and the pattern won't line up and you just unscrew it and re-engage another thread and then it will uh, match uh, that pattern up. So I have that one uh, inked up this week. Uh, another one that I had inked up last week, uh, again, another Sailor King of Pen, uh, but this is actually made by Sailor for classic pens. And this is the, although it says here Sailor, it's actually the Classic Pens LB5 Kauseki. Uh, this is made by uh, Sailor. The material is a diffusion bonded acrylic. What does that mean? Well, it basically means they take varying uh, colors of, uh, of effectively resin uh, and they squeeze it together and fuse it together into a diffusion bonded acrylic so it, it bonds on the molecular level uh, it's a stunning material uh, and then they cut it in in the opposite way to to give this lovely pattern uh, as i said it is made by sailor so it does have a sailor king of pen nib there and uh, that's a 21 count gold nib this one has a medium nib so it writes more like a fine western fine i can post the cap again if i want to I really do like these Sailor King of Pens. They are, for me, about the right size in terms of length, in terms of girth. Uh, they just tick all of the boxes for me. They're not cheap pens, or certainly the classic pens LB5 now, because there were only 50 made in each color. It's very difficult to get hold of these now. You can only get hold of them on the second-hand market. And the prices have gone through the roof on these, They're very similar to the Arco Brown materials as well from Omar so you can still pick them up but you're going to be paying a lot more money for them so on to the next pen and this is the Omar and it is the Arte Italiana it's a Paragon Grande uh, so unfortunately Omar's long uh, closed its doors 
but this Arco brown material is a beautiful, beautiful material. And you can just see that that material comes to life there. Absolutely stunning. Uh, I, I wish somebody could make a, a celluloid that was just like this now uh, in in the 2000s because celluloid is is a very uh, rare um, um, material now. Uh, it's not made. There's cellulose uh, acetate that is made, I believe. And it's unfortunately it's a lost art, and it's a shame. And that's why these typically sell for a lot of money. Um, so I'm I'm lucky that most of my Arco material pens uh, I bought the Arco celluloid pens uh, I bought for a pretty good price, but now the prices have gone through the roof. Uh, Arte Italiana provides a silver section. It's a vermeil, so it's a this one's a gold plated. You can get some with silver. Uh, without any plating. Uh, it's got a medium Omas nib there, which has got a bit of a bounce to it. It's it's a really lovely writing nib. Uh, but I love the Arco Brown. And and honestly, I'd, I'd like a few more of the Omas Arte, Arte, Arte Italiana Paragon Grandes because they really are, really are a, a nice pen. The next pen I have inked up this week is the Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath. Another Rarden pen like the Sailor uh, Secure Nagar. Uh, this is with uh, quail's eggs that have been crushed. Uh, and it's another Macchie, but it's also a Rarden. You've got the abalone shell stripes there. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful work of art. It must take them a long time to actually make this pen. But it's a pen that I really, really do like. If I unscrew the cap, uh, there's a little bit of a spring-loaded uh, clutch mechanism. Uh, it has a Tatcha, and it's a number six size nib there. Uh, it's a, a broad nib. It's a 14 cat gold nib there. Uh, but it, it's actually a really nice size in my hand. Uh, it's a cartridge converter. You do have to push the body in a bit whilst you twist it to get that clutch mechanism to engage and that just stops the the nib drying out uh, if you're storing it for an extended period of time the next pen is the montagrappa extra 1930 shiny lines dove again another beautiful pen it's another stack celluloid and i have two with this gray stack celluloid i have this one and a Bart bartolomeo ferracina uh, from Montegrappa, but this is a beautiful, beautiful material, and you can just see why that celluloid is stunning, and and why celluloid isn't made uh, in in this sense uh, anymore. Um, you can see the 1912 badge there from Montegrappa. Uh, it has a dove nib from Montegrappa. It's a number eight size nib, but Montegrappa actually recesses these nibs in a little bit more. Uh, to the section compared to other pen manufacturers, but you have an a uh, you have an ebonite feed there. It's not an ABS uh, plastic feed. Uh, and then also I'll show you here. You've got the name Montegrappa, and then also the uh, dove there as well. So so this is a again a nice pen. I like writing with this pen. So uh, I have that inked up again this week. Uh, I haven't inked up this pen for some time. This is a Molteni. It is a Modelo 55S. Uh, the material of the pen is um, a two type of material. So you have the Omas Blue Royale uh, cap here. And then you have the Blue Luchens, which Omas used to use and, and have made a bunch of pens from. So... So th this is the, the Molteni Modelo 55S, uh, and you can see that there, uh, made in Italy, number 25 of 70. Let me get that on camera there. Uh, it's a really nice pen. Again, it's got an ebonite feed, uh, number six size nib there. It's a Bok nib. Uh, it's a medium nib, and I, I love how this writes. It's a piston filling pen. I can post the cap if I want to. 
don't need to, but I can if I want to. Again, it's a really, really nice uh, writing experience for me. So, so I have that one inked up uh, with me this week as well. Uh, another pen that I, I did have inked up last week, uh, this is a Scribo 3 in the Bologna Blue. Uh, it's made by Scrittura Bolognese in Italy, who are the uh, old Omas guys. When Omas shut its shop, they decided to create their own brand called Scribo. And uh, they make uh, their own pens, uh, but they also make some pens for other retailers. So this is a retailer exclusive. And that is the logo of right here in Shrewsbury in the UK. So right here pens. Uh, it's a cylindrical pen. It's got this beautiful um, chatoyance there on the, the cap there. And also the body. Beautiful material. Uh, it's a piston filling pen. It has the old style Omas Extra Flex Abile style nib. They call it an Extra Flex now. Uh, this is a medium nib. 14 karat gold. And uh, it really, I do like how those 14 karat gold uh, extra flex nibs write. They do write very nicely, have some bounce to them, a little bit of flex. And it just, for me, it's, it's, it's a, a, a beautiful writing experience. The next pen I have inked up, uh, this is a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the sand. Now, Leonardo in, in uh, this year in 2022 have actually made another version of this and they call it the Mosaico, uh, where they take this uh, sort of uh, sort of styrated uh, resin and they've actually cut it the opposite way or 90 degrees to this cut and uh, it creates like a mosaic type pattern. Uh, this is the original version of this, the sand, which I really do love. Uh, it's a numbered edition. Uh, it's uh, number 154 there. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a limited, it's just a numbered edition. I don't know how many of these were made. Uh, I'm guessing probably three or 400 maybe. I don't know. Uh, but this is a beautiful pen. It's a long pen. Uh, it has a captured converter. Uh, it's a medium Bock Leonardo steel nib. Uh, I do like this a lot. Uh, you can post the cap as well. Um, when I say captured converter, I'll show you here. Uh, it's a little bit sort of uh, low on ink, but it's a very wide piston that cannot be removed. It's glued into the pen. Uh, so that's why it's a captured converter, essentially. But this really is a, a lovely pen. I like it a lot. I'm just going to try and get that to match up. There you go. Uh, so I have that one inked up with me this week, but I probably will need to re-ink it again. The next pen I have inked up is this one. Again, it's a beautiful pen. It's a Visconti. It's a Macchia pen. It's a Yerushi pen. Uh, it's made. The, the material is actually made of uh, ebonite, and you then have this Macchia painting on the pen. And then uh, it's uh, Yerushi uh, over, it's sort of Yerushi lacquered over the top. Uh, very beautiful pen, uh, and it's the Luxor Obelisk. And there were only 88 of these made worldwide, and I have one of them. Uh, I have this one inked up. It's got a um, ink uh, reservoir window there. I've locked that off at the moment. Um, it's got a 23 cap palladium medium nib. And I love how this nib writes. So for me, this is actually quite a, a, a nice writing pen. So I have that one inked up with me as well this week. And then the last pen I have inked up is this one. It's a Visconti again. It's an Ecstasy de Oud. And uh, this is made of uh, what Visconti call a black lucite. So it's a resin, but it's also got some uh, impregnation of uh, gold dust that you may be able to see there. It's a little bit hard to see, but you, hopefully you'll see some there on the body there. It's a little bit more pronounced than on the cap. Uh, now, this is an interesting pen because you've got this very large cap finial, which you would normally put some cotton fluff in. And what you do, uh, Exceed de Oud, 
uh, is uh, or do it is a, a fragrance uh, that shows you the limited edition number. Only 388 of these were made, uh, but you have this uh, sort of cap here. And if I unscrew that, you have a little perfume dabber. So the idea is you store perfume in there and you take that, you dab it and you fragrance the cotton wool that you would put in there. Now, I still haven't done that in, in a number of years. Uh, I have been tempted many, many times to do that. The, the only issue with this pen, and I will show you, is the filling mechanism is a, a push-pull piston converter. So it only, it doesn't hold, it probably holds around about 0 0.7 milliliters of ink. It's not a large capacity because of that, maybe even 0.5. Um, but it's a pen that I love writing with. The nib on here is a 23 cap palladium nib. It's a medium nib and it has a nice bounce to it. So I do love writing with this pen a lot. So I have that one inked up with me this week as well. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen is a Sailor King of Pen Sakura Nagar. I think let's do an ink swatch first. And I mentioned that this is a broad nib. And I would actually say that normally, in most cases, a Asian nib, like a Sailor nib, would, if it was a broad nib, it would write more like a medium. This one is more of a medium to a broad. So this is the Sailor uh, King of Pen Sakura Nagar. And it is a broad and it is a 21 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is KWZ. And uh, it is grapefruit, which is an ink that I typically ink up with this pen, and I do like that ink a lot. The next pen is the Classic Pens LB5 Kawasaki. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I do love this pen a lot. I love the material, but I also love the writing experience. So this is the classic pens LB5 in the Kawasaki. And it is a medium 21 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is pilot Arashizuku, and it is sakushi which is horse's tail the next pen is the omas arte italiana paragon grande in the arco brown so we'll do an ink swatch And this one I do find right super wet. And I have to say, I love how this nib writes. So this is the Omas Arte Italiana. And it's the Paragon Grande in the Arco Brown or Bronze. And it is a medium. And it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Akamon SBRE Brown. But that is a very lovely uh, brown ink. And it's an ink that I typically ink up this pen with all the time. The next pen is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath. So we'll do an ink swatch. And uh, this is another ink that I'm starting to like a lot. And I might have to at some point get another bottle of it. 
So this is uh, the Tatcha uh, Miyabi Winter's Breath. And it is a broad and it is a let me double check this. I think it is I think I mentioned before this might be a 14k. So actually an 18 carat gold nib. So it's 18 carat gold. And then uh the ink in here is uh Venustus or Venvustus. And it is uh aqua. D. Spargy. And typically, I, I would normally ink this pen up with uh, uh, Pelican Edel Sign Topaz, which is another similar color. But I uh, got sent a bottle of this uh, from uh, Derek at Stonecott, and I am really liking uh, this ink. So uh, I am uh, trying to use this ink up. And I will probably end up buying another bottle because I do like this ink a lot. The next pen is the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a beautiful uh, pen. I love the nib writing experience on this pen a lot. It's got a little bit of a bounce. So this is the Montegrappa It's the extra 1930 shiny lines dove and it is a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is diamine L gray which is a I think a very fitting color ink for that pen. The next pen inked up is the Molteni Modelo 55S in the Royal Blue Luchens. So let's do an ink swatch. And I typically ink this up, although it's a blue, I typically ink it up with a purple ink. So this is the Molteni. Modelo 55S and uh, it is a uh, medium 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is KWZ Gummy Berry which is a really really nice purple ink uh, and it's really my I'd say my second most favorite purple ink the first being Diamine Majestic Purple. The next pen inked up is the Scribo 3 in the Bologna Blue. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a medium nib. It's a 14 cat gold nib. And I actually wanted to try this ink uh, in comparison with the uh, Van Vista ink. So this is a Scribo 3 in the Bologna Blue. And it is a medium and it is a 14 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Visconti Turquoise. And I wanted to really see what the two inks would come out like. Maybe I should have put the two pens side by side and, and I could see it a little bit clearer, but we'll see. We'll see what that comes out like. The next pen is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in the sand. We'll do an ink swatch. And... There's been a few uh, colors that I've put in this pen in the past. I typically go with a purple color, and I did, with this pen, get a bottle of Leonardo Purple, which I went through about 
half a bottle and then I switch to using Diamond Majestic Purple because I can get hold of that easier. And I still haven't actually gone back to Leonardo Purple, so I probably should at some point. Uh, so this is the Leonardo. It's the Memento Zero. Grande. In the sand. And I can actually see that this is really starting to sheen. So this is a uh, medium. And it is a still nib. And then the ink in here is diamine. And it's majestic. Purple. But that is a beautiful purple ink. The next pen inked up is the Visconti. And this is the Luxor Obelisk. So again, we'll do an ink swatch. And... It'll be interesting to see because sometimes these inks look different depending on whether or not they're a narrow or a wider nib or a dry versus a wet nib. So this is the Visconti Luxor Obelisk. And it is a medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is the same as this one. It's Visconti Turquoise. And I suspect it's probably going to come out the same as that Scribo too, because they're both very wet writing nibs. And then the last pen here is the Visconti Ecstasy de Oud. So we'll do an ink swatch. So this is... A lovely wet writing nib. So this is the Visconti Ecstasy de Oud. And it is a medium 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Majestic Purple. Which is a lovely, lovely purple ink. My favourite ink. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Sailor King of Pens Sakura Nagar in a broad 21 cat gold nib inked up with KWZ Grapefruit. We have a Classic Pens LB5 Kauseki in a medium 21 cat gold nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Sakushi. We have an Omos Arte Italiana Paragon Grande in the Arco Brown, in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Akamon SBRE Brown. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath in a broad 18 cat gold nib inked up with Vinvistus Aqua Di Spargi. We have a Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Molteni Modelo 55S in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with KWZ Gummy Berry. We have a Scribo 3 in the Bologna Blue in a medium 14 cat gold nib inked up with Visconti Turquoise. And I would say that this is actually looking a shade lighter than the uh, Venvistus Aqua di Spargi. Uh, we have a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in the sand in a medium steel nib inked up with diamond majestic purple and you can see there how that purple has changed color to a goldy sheen we have a visconti lux or obelisk in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with visconti turquoise and then we have a visconti ecstasy de Oud in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with diamond majestic purple So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.